Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about shaders. So in the last week or so, I've talked about a couple miscellaneous things you can do with shaders. I've talked about shader functions for, for allowing you to reuse your code easily, and I've talked about shader macros, which are um, much like game maker macros, except better in every way, is one way to put it. I've also been reminded by the YouTube comments that there is one more thing uh, regarding shader uniforms that I don't think I've actually mentioned and that I would like to. So, um, let's see, before I touch any code, this is a fairly old project. This is the 3D point light, uh, video project that I've, um, that I made back in, like, July, last July, June or July. Um, it's pretty old. It's, a uh, it's a point light. It's being done in the vertex shader. There is no fragment shader lighting. Um, there is, um, let's see, there's not much in the scene. There's just, a. Uh, I don't think I've even fixed the camera pitch in this, uh, as of this video. Anyway, it's pretty basic. You see what it looks like here. There's no tune shaders or anything. So if I were to go and look into that shader, uh, let's just uh, maximize this code window a little bit. And I'm going to clean this up. This is, uh, by the way, this is converted from, from a Game Maker Studio 2.2 project. So the, um, the structure of the project might be a little bit weird. But as you can see, it just it works. Uh, the code still works. Uh, there's just all the automatic conversion stuff that's kind of still here. Right now, there's a single point light being um, being processed just in the main function in the vertex shader. Um, I am going to do a couple things. I am going to start by putting this into a um, into a function. So I'm going to just define a function up here. Uh, it is going to, I think, return a hey. Let's say a float eval light, and it can um, it can evaluate a light. Let's take a vec three uh, light. Position. I guess I'll give it like a float light radius as well. Um, and it's just going to mostly, uh, let's see what it's going to do. Uh, it's going to mostly do exactly what the body of the of the main function actually does. So it's going to have a, an ambient light color. Actually, I, I don't want the ambient light color in there. Uh, I'm also going to want to give it a world position. And the world normal. Uh, since those are um, since those are what these are. Okay, I see. I'm missing. A, I'm mixing snake case and uh, camel case here. So the light's direction is world position minus light position. Uh, the light distance is the length of the light uh, direction vector. Uh, the attenuation is going to be this expression. So light range is uh, has, is now light radius. Uh, so let's update that variable name. Light direction is going to be normalized uh, so that it has a unit length of 1. Uh, light angle difference is going to be the maximum of the dot product of the world normal and the uh, the light direction value over here and uh, 0 so you can't have a negative amount of light because that would just be dumb. And instead of setting v underscore v color in this function, uh, I am going to have it instead return a... Um, a value so that can be uh, simply we're gonna deal with the ambient color outside of this it's gonna be the attenuation value uh, times the lights color now I'm going to um I'm going to do that outside of the eval the light function as well uh, multiply by the uh, the light angle difference which is m dot l really I don't know why I didn't just call it that in the first place it would have been I don't know if I was trying to make it more clear about what it was but it's just m dot l so now that we've got that, we can come down here uh, into the shader function, into the shader function, into the main function, and we can start replacing some of this. Uh, let's uh, let's say float light amount is going to equal eval light. Uh, the world position is world position. The world normal is world normal. Um, the light position should be a uniform. Uh, it is a uniform vector three light position, and the light radius. Is, a, is also a uniform, I believe. Yeah, light radius over here. And this is going to return a um, the amount of light that each vertex should receive. Uh, it's going to be light amount is going to just be equal to this light evaluation function up here. And you'll see why I didn't put everything in, in that function in a minute. Uh, and this is going to come back to code reuse. But we're going to say uh, v underscore v color, so the varying that gets passed to the fragment shader is going to be equal to the uh, to the vertex color, multiplied by 
this this statement here. So light ambient is just the ambient light color. That's hard coded right now. You could make that a uniform if you wanted to. Uh, times the attenuation, and I'm going to rearrange this uh, times the light angle difference. So this term here, attenuation times n dot l or light angle difference or whatever you want to call it, is now wrapped up in light amount um, over here. The rest of this is just making sure that the uh, that the light intensity never goes above one because that will make things look washed out and it's uh, it's going back to the original input alpha uh, for the vertex so that the light doesn't do anything weird to transparency uh, because you probably don't want that. And now this should look the same as it did um, 10 minutes ago, five minutes ago, whatever. Uh, we have a spotlight. It is in the middle of the room. It is being accurately um, accurately displayed against against my player cylinder, whatever that is, uh, and also against the, uh, the little blocks in the scene. Okay. You can see vertex shade of lighting is not great. Uh, you can see that it's kind of triangular on the floor, which is made of big, big triangles because it doesn't get interpolated between them quite properly. Okay. So this eval light function uh, allows us to do some things. The, the most important one is that it allows us to reuse, to reuse this code. So if we wanted to plop down a second light, uh, float light other amount equals eval light. Um, if you wanted to plop down a second light, you could do so. And then you could either multiply these together, light, um, light amount times light other amount, or as would be, would be more common, uh, when you want to combine lights, uh, add them together. Because if you have two lights shining on each other, they, they, um, they enhance each other rather than reducing each other, uh, multiplicatively. And this would be, uh, this would evaluate a second light. If I were to run the game now, uh, they would both be evaluating the same light, but it would be done twice, so we would be slightly brighter than before, uh, because the light is effectively twice as intense as it used to be. Okay, I can see I'm, uh, I'm getting a little bit, a little bit washed out over there. That's fine. So the thing that I think most people clicked on this video for is, um, is not so that you can use the same light twice in a shader, but so that you could, uh, do things such as pass multiple lights to the shader, multiple light positions to the shader in an array. And to do that, uh, we would go to the object where this is being done, which I believe is the camera's draw event. And we are setting a bunch of shader uniforms up here. The only thing I'm going to work with in this video is the light position uh, uniform to the shader. I'm not going to bother with light color and light range. If you wanted to, you could do the exact same thing with light color and light range that I'm going to do with position in this video, but if you're, if you're doing this kind of thing with shader, you should be able to take this information and apply it to the other uniforms pretty easily. So, uniform arrays in shaders are uh, a little bit different from arrays that you might be used to using in, an, in just Game Maker. Um, to declare an array, you can use square bracket notation. Uh, I've showed these square brackets and shaders in videos in the past when it comes to matrices. Uh, matrices are basically just elaborate arrays that are of a predefined size and you can do certain operations with them, like multiply them together. Um, you can also use arrays of other things, such as uniforms when it comes down to using uh, uniforms. This is a little bit different from a, an array in Game Maker. Instead of saying uh, light position is going to equal an array of different things, uh, this won't work in a shader. You can't actually assign a value to a uniform. Uh, you, you can't, as far as I know, assign a default value to a uniform. That would be handy if you could do that, just saying, but I'm not aware that you can. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to declare an array of a fixed size. Uh, let's go with three. So this is going to be a um, light position is going to be an array of three vector threes. And the vector three, as you all know, has a has three components, an X, a Y, and a Z, uh, three different floating point numbers. So if we're to come back to the camera draw event where this uniform is getting, um, is getting set over here in line 12, did I make the font size bigger? I want to make the font size bigger. Make it easier to read. Let's collapse that. We uh, we could use the space on the screen. So shader set uniform f. Uh, so this is going to set a a, set, a series of uh, floating point value uniforms to the shader. There's a couple ways you could do this. There are two different functions for setting floating point uniforms to shaders. Uh, one of them is just shader set uniform f, and the other one that you can see in this uh, in this little help helpful drop down is shader set uniform f array, and this will do more or less the same thing, but instead of taking a series of values um, to the function, it will take a single array as its parameter. If I were to back up a couple steps and get rid of this, uh, get rid of this three 
in square brackets on light position and run the game now, you will see that this does basically the same thing. Uh, what's it complaining about? Light other amount. That's right. I got rid of that because that's kind of not needed right now. Um, we're going to see that this is going to do the same thing. So we still have our spotlight on the floor and it's, um, it's still behaving as it did before. Uh, we are just using a different function to set the, uh, to set the uniform array, to set the, the uniform vector three. And this kind of reveals a dirty little secret. Well, not really a dirty little secret about shaders, but it's, um, vector threes are just maybe a little bit less magical than you thought they were. All they really are in a shader is an array of three values. So this already, if I were to go back to the Vertex shader, uh, this already, in a way, is already an array. This light position value, uh, we are just not using it as one. We are using it as a single vector three value. But inside the computer, all they really are is a is just three values in sequence, and that means you're allowed to treat them as such. And now that I've said that, I'm curious. Uh, if I were to shader set uniform float array uh, to something that's just a single floating point value, like uniform light range, which is just a a, a scalar value, a vector one, as it were. Uh, would it still allow me to do that if I just pass one value to the uh, to the function? It looks like it is. Okay, cool. So all numbers are just arrays of size one, and uh, that's that's something that you will that you will never be able to un unhear. Okay, that's kind of pointless. Let's not do that. Let's uh, let's keep it simple, stupid, whenever possible. So now that we know this, now that we know that vectors are actually just arrays, and also that. And also that, like, single floating point values are actually just, like, single... What it really boils down to is a single, um, a single unit in memory, a single unit in the computer memory. If we want to, uh, if we want to create a vector 3, uh, an array of vector 3s as a uniform and pass it to the shader, we can just say a uniform vector 3 light position of size 3 as we had before, and then uh, we can just give it some other light positions. So we can say, like, 250... 564 and if you want to space these out you can uh, to make it a little bit easier to see where each value starts and stops. Uh, 250, 564 is the other one. Let's put the other one, let's put a third one somewhere else out in space. 320, um, 400 and like maybe 80 or so. And those are going to be our three lights and this is actually not going to do anything. Eval light. Did I, did I screw something up? Line 39. World position, world normal, uh, light position. Okay, so this is now an array. Uh, this is an array of vector threes instead of a single vector three. And since uh, eval light expects a, um, a parameter of a, a of a vector three instead of an array of such, uh, we have to access that with uh, square brackets to tell it to go to index zero. And this is going to look the same as it did before. Again, uh, we are just only using the first light that's being passed to the shader. If I wanted to account for the other ones, I could say light amount plus equals. Again, I'm going to add these values together because lights lights um, amplify each other rather than uh, subtracting each other, reducing each other. Uh, we are going to evaluate all of these by saying um, light amount is going to equal uh, the evaluation of the first light plus the evaluation of the second light, plus the evaluation of the third light, and now we are going to see that we have three lights on the, um, on the world. All right, so there is indeed one here, uh, one here, and one kind of out in the middle. I would have liked the third one to be farther away. Uh, it's dimmer because it's higher in the air. I was hoping for something that would be a little bit farther out, so let's make it instead uh, something like... Oh, I don't know. Let's go with, like, 600 and 640. Or so that should be su sufficiently far. All right, there we go. Now it's farther out. Uh, we we can see we have three lights on the floor. So this is this is shader uniforms um, arrays. There's not too much to them actually. They're just a little bit different from what you might be used to seeing. If you want, uh, just the same way that you can use the shader set uniform f array function for maybe values that you don't need to use an array for. Uh, you should also be able to just say shader set uniform f and pass it a series of values like this. Um, I don't know if there's a limit on the number of a... Uh... That doesn't look right. So uh, while you're allowed to use the shader set uniform f array function to pass um, shader uniforms that don't necessarily have to be represented by an array uh, to the shader, 
It does not seem to work the same in reverse. It doesn't seem like you can just use shader set uniform F for an entire array of values. If I were to run the game now, this would look a little bit weird. We have um, we have our, our, our first light off sort of in the by the first couple squares in the room, but everything else is at position zero. And I believe what is happening is that shader set uniform F will only accept the first four values uh, because it's only intended to really be used for up to a vector four. So you could use it for a single floating point value, you could use it for a vector two, you could use it for a vector three, you could use it for a vector four. But after that, the parameters will be ignored. And anything else, anything else that goes to the shader will just be a zero uh, by default. So the, uh, the second and third lights really over here will just be zeros at that position. And that would be why the light is appearing at the origin of the room. Um, again, I believe that's what's happening. I don't know for sure. It also, it does seem to be hovering in the middle of the air for, uh, for um, a, couple, a couple units uh, because you can indeed see the light on the floor. But I have not tested that. I am not that curious about why you can't do that. But nevertheless, shader set uniform F is, is only for single values or vectors. Okay. So again, if you wanted to, you could, you could do this to the other uniforms. If you wanted to have a, a series of lights that all have their own ranges and colors and positions, um, you could use a uniform arrays. It's, a, it's, it's not uncommon to do things such as uh, define max lights, and you can make that a value of eight, you can make that four, uh, maybe three if you're working on low-end hardware, or two if you want to make your game run on a Raspberry Pi. And instead of hard-coding the, uh, the size of the array, um, in the in the uniform definition, you would instead say max lights. Uh, as we know from last week's video, max lights is a is a compile time uh, macro. So when the shader compiler compiles the shader, the shader compiler compiles the shader is a strangely pleasing palindromic sentence. This is what it'll actually see. It'll actually just see that. But if you ever want to um, change this value, you only have to modify one value in your code instead of several. That's fine. Uh, let's let's go back to putting that three. And again, if you wanted to do that with the light color and light range um, values, you could uh, do the same thing. And if you want to change the number of lights available, you would only have to change the one the one value. Um, that's it. Those are shader uniform arrays. Uh, I hope you found that useful. I don't know how much longer I can just go running my mouth and ad libbing and filling airtime or whatever. The code for this will be found in the video description. I don't know if I remembered to actually make a base commit for this project, so it might just be um, it might just all just be up on GitHub in a single commit, and um, it won't have the changes committed as I usually like to have. Anyway, I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two of these videos a week: one of these tutorial tutorials and one let's make a tower defense game. So if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, definitely subscribe. I'm going to be posting one more video today on something that you can do with um, with 3D tricks that's not terribly important but can be a lot of fun sometimes in some situations. And um, after that, next week, I'm actually going to make a channel update video and take a short break from making the complicated 3D stuff. Just if you're a, if you're a new subscriber, a little bit of um, advance warning for that. But 3D stuff will be back soon enough. I gotta stop talking now. I will see you all later. Special thanks to Emily Koyo, Posho, Edward Holt, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.